Hello, my name is Ade Subanjo. I'm a pastor and a love coach. And today, if you are struggling because your husband has left you and you want an answer, you want her or him to come back, I'm going to show you just two things that you can do to bring him back. I'm so sorry to that your husband has left you and there's pain and there's confusion you are wondering if it is possible because you've tried your best and they have not come back the first thing i want to talk about is how do we get here how how does a man walk away from the woman that he loves has done all he can to introduce her to his family paid so much money to get wedded to spit with and had children with and then one day he just gets up and walk away from the home when your husband walks away from the home apart from those who are just um, cheating and unfaithful or ad addicts apart from those the reason why a man leaves the home is because he doesn't feel that that home is good for his mind for his potential when a man feels that if I stay in this home, I'm going to be diminished. I will not be motivated to work. I will not be able to be my full potential. The man is going to leave the home. When he figures that if I stay on my own, I'm better off than if I stay with this woman, then he leaves the home. When he feels disrespected, when he feels as if he is the woman, is the is the not the woman is the is sub subordinate in his home. When he feels that he, his wife is the one dictating what happens in the home, then he's going to leave you. That's why he left. So if you are watching me because your husband walked away, I'm here to give you good news. We can get him back, and we can get him back fast. Condition though, there are some two conditions that you must have. Number one is that you really, really want to have him back. We'll talk about that. The second condition is that you have communication with him regularly. If you do not have regular communication with him, so he left you, cut you off, disconnected from you, you don't even know where he is in the world, then this is not the video for you because what you need is a miracle. And of course, we're going to talk about God's part in this design. That's why I'm confident that you can get him back within a short time. Um, and that will be so, but the, the other parts of the video, you will not be able to enjoy and because you don't have communication with him. However, you can still do the, your part by talking to God and trusting in God and then letting him go. So you two things that you can do. The first thing, the most powerful of them is to pray, but not to pray like most people pray. Yeah, <laughs> they pray and they think they're praying, but, and I do that. I, I used to do that. We, we think we're praying, but we're not praying. We're just afraid and we are talking to God about our fears. That's not prayer. Prayer is asking for specific stuff. And, and so when you, when you find that your husband has left, there's a way you must pray. And this is the one of two things. So please play, pay attention. There's a way you must pray that will get your husband back. And that way of prayer is to release him into God's hands and trust that God will bring him back. It's so important. I have to say it again. The kind of prayer where you release him into God's hands and trust that God will call, bring him back. So it's not the kind of prayer that you do with fear. You just go to the Lord and cry and talk about how much you miss him, how much uh, you, you believe the devil has taken him and that uh, you really wish he would be back. And oh God, please bring him back. Please bring him back. That's, a, that's not the kind of prayer. Because when you say God bring him back, it's assumed that God doesn't want to bring him back and you are just begging God to please be normal, to be please be kind and bring him back. That's not what prayer is. That's why you've been praying that and it doesn't work. What you need to pray is to say, Lord, I surrender to you. I surrender my husband to you now. Teach me what to do in order to get my husband to see you and to yield to your plan and desires for us. 
That's how you pray the kind of prayer that makes a difference. So there's a difference in mindset in this prayer. If you want your husband to come back, you need to have the mindset that God who brought you together is vested in keeping you together. You need to know that. You need to understand that. That God who brought you together is vested in bringing and keeping you together. And it is with this mind that you go to the Lord. You go to the Lord with the mindset that, Lord, I know that you are doing everything to bring my husband and I back together. However, I have not been doing my part. Yes, if you have not. But if you feel you have been doing your part, you can say to God, Lord, I've been doing my part. And I therefore know that you will do everything that it takes to bring him back. I trust you that he's coming back. And I praise you. Right now, I just receive grace to continue to do my part and to trust you when you give me other instructions. Now, let's look at the scripture because we cannot just talk without basing it on scriptures. Mark 11, verse 24. In the English Standard Version, it says, Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So when you pray um, to get your husband back, you need to pray it with a mindset that whatever you're asking, the Father hears you and it's yours. So when you say, Lord, I know that you are vested in us being together because I know that you hate divorce. I know that you gave me this husband. So you're coming from the place of faith. You're not coming from the place of fear. Then you're going to ask for something. And what you're asking it for is God to give you wisdom to know what to do. What to do so that what God has already set in motion comes to pass. So you're asking for that. Then you believe that he releases that to you right away. He releases that to you right away. There are some other things that you pray in line with that, which is that every plan of the enemy, what the enemy is doing to hold your husband back and to break you apart also should be destroyed. You stand in authority to do that in a place of prayer. You also, Because you know what God wants, you can then stand in authority to say, you are the one doing this part. It's not really prayer. You are just standing in the name of the Lord and you're destroying everything that the enemy is doing to keep your husband away from you. But most importantly, what you're really asking God to do now is to give you the wisdom to know exactly what to do. And he will tell you there are a few things that you need to do. And once you've done that, you release your husband to God. So you stop all the things that you've been doing to change your husband to try to get him. So no begging. You don't go begging him. Oh, my dear husband, I beg you, please. No, no, no. No more doing that. And no reporting to his mother. No reporting to his, his pastor. No um, trying to guilt him by telling him um, you need to take care of your children. None of those. You let him be. But you still communicate with God. You communicate with him. You, dis you, you make sure that the lines of communications are, are in place. And you let him know that. Then you let him know that you understand why he may have felt disrespected. And uh, you want to make some changes. 